Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. It's been a while since I posted a video. It's because the winter garden is kind of slow. So I thought I'd just have a little bit of work day. I've got to harvest a few things, take out some plants that have been damaged, show you around a little bit what's going on. And I also want to talk about a product I'm going to review, uh, a bunch of products actually. And uh, yeah, I don't do that a lot, but I think I'm going to like these. we have um, first order of business my dog Phoebe I want to give you all an update um, Phoebe is the official dog of my garden video channel <laughs> but uh, Phoebe is a corgi very active and sometimes she gets too active for her own good uh, Phoebe has injured her leg uh, she has had an ongoing injury with her back left leg I think it's her back right leg uh, for quite some time now she will just go outright ballistic when she hears or sees another dog on the other side of the fences here and she'll run up and down and spin around and bark and maybe you've seen some of that in some of my videos but uh she just goes from zero laying around the house all day zero to 150 miles an hour in like a second and that kind of exertion um you know you can pull muscles you can tear ligaments and things like that I think she's done something really serious. She injured herself many, many months ago, and uh, uh, over time, every now and then, she'll injure herself again, and she'll be gimpy for a day or two. But this time, uh, she was just chasing the water hose, and uh, my son uh, was just spraying some water, and Phoebe went out of her mind berserk, because that's what she does when the water hose is out. Well, she yelped, and she's been limping ever since. It's been about a week and a half. We thought maybe she would get better and heal with just some, you know, keeping her from running, but yeah, it's bad. So we're gonna take her to the vet tomorrow and uh, see what she's torn. She's torn something. So yeah, Phoebe is down. Um, kind of sad, huh? See an active dog like that not be able to be active. It's kind of sad, but yeah, it's what happens to dogs when they go out of their mind. Let's take a look around the garden. Look how terrible these plants look. It's awful. They're crispy, crunchy, falling away like that. That's the way it goes. Hey, um, I had an Instagram follower uh, tell me that one of the most important things they've ever learned from my channel was that it's okay for your garden to look ugly. And I appreciate that kind of feedback. That's so true. Uh, growing in giggles, thank you so much for that encouraging word. Sometimes your garden looks like this. Sometimes it's ugly. This has been the culmination of an aphid infestation that we caught long enough to give us a harvest. You can see in here there's some uh, cauliflower there. But the plant itself is not doing well. So we're really going to have to just kind of take out this plant and several others that were uh, hit, first hit by aphids and then because they were hit by aphids when the freeze came a few nights ago, it really did a number on them. Now these are normally freeze hardy, but because they were already compromised, these plants are done. So. There we go. We take that one out. Gonna harvest that cauliflower. And at least we got something. Many folks will say that I could leave this in here and let it grow another head. But friends, this, this plant is far too compromised to really start growing again. Uh, it's putting all its labor and energy into growing this head of cauliflower. And uh, that's probably all it's gonna do. I'm going to give this, this uh, no, don't eat my cauliflower. I'm going to give this, uh, this, this ground time to sit and rest a while till uh, spring. So I'm going to harvest our, our cauliflower, call it a win, and watch Phoebe eat the leaves. Now you may have seen cauliflower bigger than this, of course, at the grocery store. Bought some the other day, actually. But uh, you know, anytime you get a bunch of cauliflower out of your garden that's always a good day so I'm pleased with that that's enough for a meal for my wife and I and for Sam and yeah cauliflower nice huh I don't think I've ever seen a cauliflower plant in such bad condition look at that all these dry leaves these are the leaves that were affected by the aphids and you can see the parts of the leaves that are not dry <clears throat> They're pretty compromised. So we're going to just harvest what we can. We're going to cut our losses while we can. And we're going to enjoy some fresh produce from the garden, even though it's ugly. It's OK. All right, this plant here is a broccoli plant. And 
we have all these leaves that have been compromised by aphids that we're just going to remove. I've already harvested a good head of broccoli here and we're going to see if it can give us some more growth. And you can see there's new growth coming out. The inner leaves here are doing quite well. So Sam and I are just going to peel off all these leaves that look like they're in bad shape. Yeah, just break the whole stem off. There we go. And what we're left with here, I'm going to take this one too. What we're left with here is some fresh leaves. That's an old leaf. And we'll see what happens. It doesn't hurt to leave it here if it's got some good growth on it. And that's some pretty decent growth. So we'll see if this broccoli will give us another head. I got a bad plant down there I need to take out too. Let's go get that one. All right, take a look at this plant. Another broccoli that we've harvested from. And it's got some really bad looking leaves on it. That's awful, isn't it? Kind of makes you sad. But this plant is putting on a little bit of new growth. Not as much as I like to see. So I'm just going to take the whole thing out. Oh. Yeah, we're going to start over here. Let this ground rest a little bit. Uh, my cabbages are doing well. They're handling the freeze just fine. The aphids didn't attack the cabbages as bad as they got my other brassicas. So that's the way it goes. It's gardening. All right, so my daikon radishes are ready to harvest, these big ones at least. And so Sam's going to reach in there and pull one of those out. I think you're going to need two hands. There you go. Man. There is a storage radish, daikon radish. These are supposed to store really well. This is a Korean variety. What do you think? It's big. All these greens. Some people eat the radish greens, we don't. So all that biomass right there. Look how far down this radish went to harvest minerals and nutrition and store it up in this biomass. So we're gonna go put that in our compost pile. So all this mass goes into the compost pile. That's good stuff. There we go. Looking good. Lots and lots of greens in there. We're going to have to balance that with some paper shredded, uh, some shredded paper. I was going to say paper shredded. <laughs> what do we got there? Got nice radish. daikon radish. So long as you wash them off, they get really nice and white. Really beautiful. Beautiful root. It's a little hot now. And to eat these radishes, generally uh, they are peeled. The peel is about... 1 16th to 1 8th inch thick, but what's in there is real nice mellow daikon radish. And what you can do is make kimchi, you can ferment these, make pickles, you can add them to salads, you can make a soup base with them. There's a number of ways to eat these daikon radishes, and they are a superfood. They are filled with vitamins and one of the most nutritious things you can eat in the garden. All right, nice, huh? Mm -hmm. There's our daikons that we harvested. That one looks like a what? Burrito. <laughs> Not bad. All right, so what we're left with is four, five cabbage heads that are, you could harvest them now if you wanted to. I want them to get a little bit bigger. I like cabbage, and so I'm real happy with those cabbages. That broccoli is the only plant we've left out of the broccoli and cauliflower. It's the healthy one. We'll see if it can grow some more. Carrots are doing good down there. Daikons, well, they're doing great. I've got so many daikons now, I'm gonna have to give some away. I've let the uh, tatsoi, well, the tatsoi's right here. Tatsoi's getting eaten alive by bugs and the freeze really knocks it back. But the leaves you'll find down in the bottom are nice and tender. Uh, the frost tends to settle on the upper canopy and destroys the upper canopy, but what's down below is just fine. And you can see that happen to the daikons as well. Frost damage up top, but if you look down inside, there's all this lush, good growth. And they're just powering through. Celery, we're gonna blanch our celery. It's almost ready to start blanching. You wanna blanch your celery about three weeks before you harvest. Eh, maybe we've got some more time to go before it's three weeks before harvest. But what we'll do is we'll just gather it all up like that and we'll wrap it in cardboard so that this dark green down here uh, doesn't stay dark green. It starts to get kind of light green. If it's dark green and it stays that way, it can get bitter. And well, I want celery that I can eat, munch on and chop and put in food. So we're gonna blanch it. Show you how to do that when the time is right. Collard greens got knocked back by the frost a bit. 
which is surprising. Normally collard greens power through uh, the frost, but you can see we've got frost damage there. But sending out new leaves here in the middle, and if we don't get a freeze, I'll be able to get some collard greens. I could probably get a mess of greens out of there right now, but well, I'll let them grow some more. Frost hit the kohlrabi, you can see, but same thing. It only hit the top, and some of these leaves that had been damaged are still doing photosynthesis. You know, they're still in good shape. Just the edges here and there got a little chilled, but down below everything's looking good. So they're starting to fatten up down there just a little bit. That's encouraging. Rutabagas took some damage. They took some serious damage from the frost, and you can see the frost damage is, is combining with snail damage. I don't know if I'm going to get rutabagas. That's an ugly crop right there. But hey, it's winter gardening. Sometimes you got to throw the dice and see if you can make it through a freeze. I was surprised that even my peas got knocked back by the freeze. Look at this. That's just some freeze damage right there, some frost damage on frost hardy plants. I don't know what that's about, but they're still going strong and putting on blossoms. In fact, I've been eating some peas off of these. Yeah, not pretty but delicious. Not pretty, but still growing. Update on my onions. Onion beds doing just fine. These little guys, not one of them has died since we transplanted these uh, onion starts from Dixondale. Yeah, even little tiny guys like this are doing fine. That's encouraging. The tips are gonna brown like that. They were that way before because they were cut. They were cut off at the farm. Look at that, even the tiny little guys are doing just fine. It's cold and they're thriving. That's encouraging. Some people hate these in their yard. These dandelions. You know what they're doing though? These are bringing up nutrients from that taproot way down deep. And what will happen is when I cut this grass, I'm putting that in a compost pile. All those nutrients from way down deep go into my garden. Y'all came today from Orchid Supply Store. Ken over at the Orchid Supply Store sent me this Mountain Magic brand soil pep. But I'm winded, man, because that's not all. Check what else we got. Wow, y'all. If God keeps blessing me like this, I don't know what I'm going to do. Ken over at Orchid Supply reached out to me and wants me to review these products. So, um, you, you, you folks on my channel, if you follow me, you know I'm, I'm pretty selective in the products that I will receive and review. Um, I've done the Midas Bees Bee House for those solitary bees, and we reviewed those, and I gave you my honest opinion. We uh, reviewed the Vego Garden Raised Bed, and I liked it a lot. Those are the only two uh, fairly large reviews that I've done on product but Ken reached out to me and I liked what I saw and so what we're going to do over the course of the next couple of weeks months however long it takes we're going to take these and review them and I can tell you right now that some of this stuff is perfect for what I have planned as I up pot my fig trees and citrus trees as we grow in containers as we amend the garden yeah, this is great. Now, with any kind of steer manure or compost, which we have down here, we've got some steer manure. We're going to have to do a bioassay on that before we actually use it in the garden because I've been stung before by um, aminopyrid, aminopyrid herbicide. Okay, so... As I mentioned earlier, one of the things that I don't normally do is take sponsorships. And um, Ken over at OrchidSupplyStore.com reached out to me and offered to sponsor me on some things. And I'm, I'm like, Ken, I, I don't do sponsorships. But uh, then he was like, well, could you review our products? We've got a new product line. We're distributing for this Mountain West uh, product and wanted to know your feedback on it. And I said, sure, I'll do that. Uh, seems like a good company. Ken and his son are running a family business, and every now and then I'll support um, I'll support a, a family business that I think is a good business by um, you know reviewing their products. 
like I said, I've reviewed the Bee House. There's one right behind me here uh, from Midas Bees. I have reviewed the Veggio Garden bed, which, uh, man, I love that bed. Um, I have even um, kind of asked you to help support my channel by um, shopping seeds at Seeds for Generations. Link down below, by the way, if you want to buy from Seeds from Generations, you'll support our channel. Why? Because I like what they're doing. What I see in Ken's business is a man who's trying to uh, bring good quality products uh, forward. And one of the products he sent me out of a whole bunch of good stuff is this steer manure compost. And I'm really looking for steer manure compost or compost from, uh, you know, cow manure compost, but I'm very wary of that. Um, if you have followed my channel uh, for a while, you know my garden was wrecked one year, completely wrecked by amino pyrrolid herbicides. And that was brought in on hay. But amino pyrrolid herbicide is more and more common these days, not only on just hay, but in steer manure and cow manure. Why? Because the, the farmers graze their cattle on land that they spray with this herbicide. It's a broadleaf herbicide, this amino pyrrolid herbicide, and the cows can eat off of that sprayed land immediately. One of the product names is Grazon. But the nature of this particular herbicide is that it attacks broadleaf plants. Grass is not a broadleaf, it's a monocot. But it attacks all that other stuff and kills it. The problem is it's persistent. It stays in the uh, manure of the cow and still kills. So it can go through a cow's digestive tract, it can come out as manure, and you put that in your garden, even after you compost it, sometimes two, to, uh, two maybe three years, this amino pyrrolid herbicide is still able to kill your garden. And that's what happens almost every week during the growing seasons. I get questions from people saying, what's wrong with my plants? Why are my tomato leaves curling up like fractals? Why are my bean leaves uh, lopsided and deformed? Why is my garden doing this? What am I doing wrong? And, and unfortunately, you're not doing anything wrong. Somebody has put amino pyrrolid herbicide on a field that fed a cow that made manure that you put in your garden and you didn't know. And a lot of gardeners don't recognize the, the, what's going on because it's the furthest thing from their mind. They think, well, I haven't fed my garden. I haven't watered my garden. I haven't treated my garden with enough care. And they think it's them when it's not. It's this herbicide. And it's everywhere. Black cow, the manure you buy down at Home Depot in the yellow bag, black cow gets their manure from, uh, at least their Florida operation, I believe, gets their manure from Union Dairy. Union Dairy sprays their fields with Grazon amino pyrrolid herbicide. I don't trust black cow anymore. I can't put it in my garden. It'll kill my garden. I literally lost an entire year of growing tomatoes in that bed right there because of amino pyrrolid herbicide. So what do you do? How do you know if your manure is safe? Well, you have to do a bioassay. I'll show you how to do that now. Before I use this product in my garden, I'm going to take some of it. And this is nice looking stuff. I mean, smells like it's been really well composted. This is beautiful, beautiful stuff. Absolutely beautiful. If this stuff is as good as it as it's supposed to be, I am so glad to have this in my garden. All you do is you take a little bit of it into a pot, little container. You don't need much. We're not going to grow anything in here uh, to fruit, you know, to 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 fruit. We're going to just test. What we're going to do is plant some seeds in here of plants that are very susceptible to amino pyrrolid herbicides, and that's tomatoes and beans. So I'm going to put a few tomato seeds in here, a few bean seeds in here, water them in real well, sprout them, and watch what happens. If they grow fine, wow, this is a wonderful bag of stuff. This is high quality compost right here. If they don't grow fine, we know that we can't, we can't use this on broadleaf plants. We can use it in our lawn, we can use it on grasses, we can use it with monocot crops like corn, but we can't use it on any kind of dicot or broadleaf plant. Can't use it in our tomato bed or with our squash or with our beans. But we have to find out first. It is about two weeks before I'm sowing my seeds and about oh, eight weeks, maybe nine weeks before my beds have to be ready for spring. So we've got plenty of time now. And if this turns out to be as good as it looks, man, I'm so happy to have this. Let's plant some seeds in here. I have some red noodle beans. These were saved in the summer of 2001 by Rachel Andorfer over at Oxheart Gardening. And she sent me some of her surplus there as a gift and I really appreciate that. So I'm gonna take uh, four of these and I'm gonna drop them in there, push them down about twice the depth of their length. 
into this material. And again, we're not growing a crop here. We're just testing to see if this manure-based compost is in fact safe and not tainted with aminopyrrolid herbicides. I'm also going to take some beefsteak tomato seeds, just a few of them. All we need to see is one or two plants come up. So I'm going to take some of these from Seeds for Generations. And again, we just need a couple. I'm going to put three of them in there. And those just need to be scratched into the surface a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to water this in. We're going to keep it warm so that these will sprout. I'll probably take it inside and put it under some lights. And we're going to watch it and we're going to see when those true leaves, not the first leaves, but when the true leaves come up on these plants, the first, or first, second, third set of true leaves, we were going to examine those leaves and see are they healthy? Do they look good? If they look great, we're good to go. We can use the stuff in our garden. That's how you test a questionable material. That's how you test something that you've never dealt with before. That's how you test a new manure-based product that comes into your garden. Plant some seeds in it before you use it in your main beds and do a bioassay. All right. <clears throat> Drains real well. Look at that compost tea coming out of there basically. I think that's going to be really good stuff for the garden. I'm real excited to try this. We just have to make sure. I've been burned one too many times. Hey, thanks for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Um, I hope you maybe learned something, even if it, today's video didn't have a whole lot of teaching. Um, we did learn that sometimes you just got to remove some plants. Sometimes your garden can be ugly. That's the way it is. We learned that you have to uh, test your manure-based products before you use them in your garden in our modern context, in our modern day. There's too much out there that can hurt your garden and nobody's talking about it. The big box stores won't tell you, the farmers won't tell you, uh, many people don't even know what it is. So if you'd like to learn about herbicide poisoning, go check out my video. I'll link it up there, uh, all about aminopyrrolid herbicides. Um, Hey, we've got some spring gardening coming up. We're going to be starting our seeds in a couple of weeks indoors under the lights. I'll show you once again, as we do every year, how do we start seeds? I'm going to show you what we're going to grow and talk about sp spring planting. We've got a few maintenance things coming up. We've got to uh, bind up our celery over here and blanch it so it won't be bitter. We've got to harvest a few things and well, the, the, you never know what's coming next, you know, next week around the corner may be a deep freeze. Who knows? Like I said, you got to roll the dice in the winter and you got to plant your garden. Even if it looks ugly, sometimes you're going to get a harvest. So, thanks for joining me today. Happy gardening to you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.